I have a confession to make. I'm not a software engineer. I don't have a computer science degree. In fact, I don't have any formal tech education and I don't work at FANG. FANG? What's FANG? I had to Google it. It stands for Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. I actually work for myself. I'm my own boss and I built a seven figure business in less than three years. The first step I took to making this happen was learning to code. Fun fact, I started learning to code when I was in my 30s, which makes me um, someone who grew up watching Back to the Future, The Smurfs, and Saved by the Bell. Anyone else recognize this sound? The first time I came across code, besides seeing it portrayed in Hollywood movies, was by accident. You see, I'm a military wife. I actually met my husband in Afghanistan back in 2008 when I worked for the government. We met, fell in love, I quit my job, moved to the UK, he's British. I bounced around a few different nine to five jobs. And in one of those jobs, my boss told me to add some functionality to the website. I had no idea how to do what he asked for. So I did what anyone would do in that position. I Googled it. The result, some random gobbledygook looking code that meant absolutely nothing to me. But I copied and pasted it into the website and sure enough, it worked. It was magical. Doves were flying and angels were singing. Seriously though, that moment was the start of my journey to my dream job. I dove in head first, learned as much as I could. I desperately wanted a remote job that I could do from anywhere because as a military family, we moved a lot. Here's the thing about learning to code. I always thought I needed to be a math whiz to be good at coding. Which I definitely wasn't. Come to find out, you don't have to be a math whiz, but you do need good problem solving skills. And it always helps if you've got some gumption and aren't afraid of learning something new. Any other lifelong learners out there? So after that magical moment, when I first stumbled on coding, I dove in head first. I started with, you guessed it, Googling how to learn to code. After lots of research, I decided to go the free and self-taught route. I'd already spent tons of time and money on higher education, of which I wasn't using any of those skills in my nine to five. And I wanted to make sure I really enjoyed it before investing too much. Plus, I was in my 30s and I didn't wanna be the old person in the room who was starting at zero with a bunch of youngsters who'd been techie from birth. Because my first interaction with code was with a website, I decided to go down the web development route. My first learning experience was with the Odin project because I wanted to learn more about front-end development and back-end development and full-stack development. These were all brand new terms to me and the self-paced learning was really appealing as I still had my nine to five job. I learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Git, command line, text editors, and then a bit of Ruby on Rails. Long enough to know it wasn't my cup of tea. So over the next two years, yes, two years, more on that later, I binged as many free resources as I could find, from Code Academy to Free Code Camp to all the YouTube videos I could consume. I completed projects and built websites. I was finally ready to start applying for jobs. 200 plus job applications later and zero offers. Talk about demoralizing. So it was around that time that a friend was retiring from the military and starting his own business. He needed a website and he asked me to build it. By then I'd become familiar with WordPress and decided to use it for his website. Seeing as he'd be updating the content, I wanted it to be relatively user-friendly. It was this same friend who suggested I start my own business building websites for small businesses. I was reluctant to stop my job search, but decided to give it a go. Side hustle wouldn't hurt, right? Plus, come to find out, my combination of coding skills, i.e. troubleshooting and problem solving skills, and WordPress made me a sort of unicorn. And I was able to quadruple my hourly rate in less than six months, no joke. A mentor once said to me, solve people's problems and you won't starve. That's exactly what I was able to do with my coding skills and WordPress skills. I was able to take on the techiest of the techie jobs when it came to WordPress customization and fixing issues, all because I knew how to code. P.S. In addition to my techie skills, I also had good personal skills and communication skills, which are super important regardless of the line of work you're in. So my side hustle quickly turned into a full-fledged business and I replaced my full-time income within five months and made over six figures in my first full year of business. Now fast forward to 2018 and my husband is retiring from the military. 
I have a business I can do from anywhere, so we do what any normal couple does in that position. We sell everything and we move into an RV and travel the US full time. While traveling and posting about our adventures on social media, lots of people wanted to know, how are you able to travel full time? What do you do for work? When I told them about my coding journey and then specializing in WordPress, they wanted to do the same. So I started teaching them how to code, how to troubleshoot and problem solve, how to Google, how to build websites with WordPress, how to find clients, how to start their own business with one big difference that I didn't have when I was learning how to code, a community, but not just any community, a supportive and encouraging community where there is no such thing as a stupid question. Remember what I said before about how it took me two years to learn before I started applying for jobs? It took me that long, primarily because of imposter syndrome. I never felt like I knew enough and I was terrified to put myself out there. I would get stuck a lot and I didn't feel comfortable asking for help, mostly because I'd been made fun of several times for asking questions. I got this response multiple times. If you don't know the answer to that question, you shouldn't be doing this. I learned to code in a vacuum and it really stunted my growth. But it was also the biggest learning experience for me. Who knew all that doubt and frustration and embarrassment would lead me to the dream job that I have now? When I started teaching others how to code, I was adamant that a supportive and encouraging community would come with it. And that's how Geekpack was born. Now I get to teach others the same tech skills that enabled me to solve people's problems, live life on my own terms, and make more money than any J-O-B I ever had. Now don't get me wrong, my journey is definitely unconventional when it comes to the tech industry, but I would have it any other way. And it all started because I decided to learn to code. Now, if my journey sounds interesting to you, but you have no idea where to start, we've got a free live coding challenge and we'd love to have you join us. We start at the very, very beginning. So if you're a newbie, it's perfect. The link to join is in the description below. All that being said, if you prefer to get a degree or go down the bootcamp route, awesome. There are so many great opportunities when it comes to learning to code. The great thing about the tech industry is there's a place for everyone. Find your tribe, feel supported, get encouragement. Your people are out there.